over government contracting with you guys. Uh, so I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure you go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and go ahead and share this out with at least three other business owners so they can find out about this thing called government contracting. Today we're going to be talking about the gold is in the data. Uh, I actually tell everybody who's interested in government contracting uh, to start with the data um, because we like to cheat over here. And uh, it's extremely hard to cheat in government contracting, well, business, period, um, if we're not looking at the data first. Uh, so today, that's what we're going to be focusing on is taking a look at the data. And we're going to be utilizing uh, my tool here called SB Money Flow to look through this data. We've created something that uh, helps the everyday business owner get through a tedious process is a whole lot faster. Um, the stuff that we're going to be sharing today, you can absolutely find it free on the government's websites. I'll tell you the two sites of what we'll, well, three sites of what we'll be utilizing for data that we've built inside of our system. Um, the first site is called fpds.gov. That's Frank Paul David Sam.gov. That will be a site that shows all previously awarded government contracts, uh, which, again, I'll explain later on in this segment why we want to know this, uh, as well as usaspending.gov. That's usaspending.gov. Both of those websites um, are pivotal to creating a strategic plan on how you're about to go after winning these government contracts. So, those are the two free sites that are provided by the government. But once again, uh, we'll be utilizing my tool, SB Money Flow, uh, instead of actually um, manually going through those sites today. Um, so hold on tight. We'll be breaking this stuff down here in the next hour. Uh, hopefully I'll be done by 8 o'clock. If at any time that you have questions, Go ahead, put a cue in the front, followed by your question. So when I do get to the uh, Q&A segment, I can go ahead and answer those for you quickly. Don't forget, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button. Uh, so we can inform other entrepreneurs about what we got going on over here. Now, before we dive into what we're doing, don't forget, <clears throat> we do have our special here for SB Money Flow. Uh, the Black Friday special will be alive for the entire month of November. Uh, you're going to get everything included when you get the Elevate plan of SB Money Flow. I'm going to give you the government contracting training so you'll have access to that to know exactly how to do government contracting. Uh, you're going to get access to the tool for our government marketplace. Uh, you're going to get access to our Black Cheat Code AI tool. And most importantly, you're going to get access to our 30-day challenge that's going to come up uh, January the 2nd, um, where for 30 days, I'm going to be teaching you how to build an entire business utilizing the small business money flow. Uh, so you have a system that's generating you money online and offline, plus getting these government contracts. So when you buy in before November... You're going to have access to all of that. You can go ahead and scan that QR code right there and take advantage of the SB Money Flow. When you do sign up, you'll get onboarded by my team, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, on Tuesdays, that's right, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Zone, we're live weekly, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This coming Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be talking about fixing your credit uh, this will be on our Dollars to Cents podcast show. We're all about uh, breaking things down and getting rid of the emotions of business and teaching you guys just the logic behind this stuff. So every Tuesday is about Dollars to Cents. Well, this Tuesday, we're going to be teaching you about fixing your credit the safest way that I know how and the only way that I know how to fix your credit. And it's the best way that you should be fixing your credit. So you may want to tune in this coming Tuesday to learn more about that. Uh, what we have this today, um, we're digging for the data gold. Um, I guess we didn't change what we're going to be talking about next Wednesday. So 
Um, I'll have that up for the next show, but we'll still be on government contracting. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are on government contracting. And this coming Thursday, I know it's Thanksgiving. I've been thinking about this one, whether I will still have it this coming Thursday or not. Mm, it'll be a toss-up. I'll look into that, whether I'm still going to do the show tomorrow. Um, I probably will. I'm just going to stay consistent with my schedule. Uh, but tomorrow, we'll be talking about how to generate leads. If for some reason I don't talk about it this Thursday, then we'll probably move it back to Friday. Or, uh, yeah, we'll probably move it to Friday because I got to get it out of the way. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to generate leads with the small business money flow. So you guys want to tune in for that. If it wasn't Thanksgiving, we would definitely be here Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. But stay on the lookout for that. Don't forget, if you want to follow my YouTube, whether you're watching on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram, you can actually scan that QR code right there that'll bring you over to my YouTube. This is where we will be live at Guaranteed, as well as you can go back and watch all of the replays. I mean, we have everything recorded right there on the YouTube channel. You really don't need to ask me too much about anything. Jump over to the YouTube, watch the recordings of the live feeds, okay? Not the uh, stored video. So when you get to YouTube, click on live, okay? And then you can see all of my previous lives. All of you guys who DM me and ask me questions about government contracting, I keep pushing you to the YouTube channel because I don't have time to start back from the basics. But you can watch YouTube and when you feel comfortable, then join the programs, okay? But don't rush into my programs trying to chase money. I'm telling you right now, I don't have a program that's dedicated to getting you rich quick. If that's what you think you're coming over here for, you are in the wrong space. We create wealth over here. We don't get people rich quick. But if you want and you're ready to not play around, then go ahead and join our programs. Until then, YouTube is your answer. Now, if you want to stay updated with everything that I got going on, when I move, how I move, what ideas is popping into my mind, I advise you to come on over here to Instagram. You can scan that QR code, follow me on Instagram, and I keep everybody updated in my Instagram story. So that is the best place that you can stay updated with me there. So that's the quick rundown um, of what we got going on over here. Hopefully you guys uh, got all of that information. Now, let me pull this back up here because again this is what we're going to be talking about uh, today as we get into data now data is very important not just for government contracting uh, but business period uh, data is like the new gold right now it's it's just as valuable if not more valuable than what the dollar is uh, all of your businesses are they're moving based off what the data tells them. And these are your big businesses. Now, I ask this and I tell you guys to do this all the time. And you guys need to go ahead and put this in the chat, right? You have the mindset of being a millionaire. I tell you all the time, I need you to type, I am a millionaire. So once again, I need you to go ahead, hit that I am a millionaire in the chat because it all starts with the mindset. But if you're saying that you want to be a millionaire, we're going to have to start doing millionaire activities. And part of millionaire activities is collecting data and manipulating data to give the answers that we need so we can know how to proceed forward each and every day. If we do not know, have the data in front of us, which scares me about a lot of people because they don't take the time to get the data, then you just run around in circles. And honestly, this is why people quit. Um, this is why people don't last, because there is no direction on what to do. The data allows us to do something that I all know that we learned in school. OK, I don't have to argue with people and guess whether you know how to do this or not. I know you know how to do it. And it's called science. Um, we all learn this process in grade school. Um, when you want to do a science experiment, well, first of all, you have to come up with a hypothesis, and that's an educated guess, right? Well, the only way that you can get an educated guess is by going through data, and you're assuming that this would be the answer if I did X, Y, and Z. Well, see, we only consider science as like in the classroom with the chemicals and all of that stuff mixing together, uh, but your life is science, right? 
Every day that you wake up and the man upstairs allows you another 24 hours uh, to make things happen, uh, to me, you're, you're living in science. Um, so I have to come up with a hypothesis of how this science experiment called life is about to operate daily. Without the educated information, well, then I'm just doing stupid activities. And we often see it happen every day around us, you know? And this is what I want you guys to start to change because you told me that you're a millionaire. I'm already there. I'm good. You know, my mindset is locked in, but I need you guys to make this shift. OK, so when you start making this shift, we're going to utilize the data so we can come up with our own hypothesis to life. And what's going to happen is going to eliminate us. From the opportunity, well, I don't want to say it's going to 100 percent eliminate but it's going to eliminate a lot of the scammers from showing themselves to us because we'll no longer be chasing money. Instead, we'll see the money. We'll have a path laid out in front of us. And if anything doesn't sound right, according to what our educated information taught us, we won't jump out there because our gut will tell us, well, you know, didn't you read about that? Didn't the data that we previously looked at tell us mm, that don't quite sound right? So I should believe what my gut is trying to tell me. But the problem is when you don't have the data, when you don't have the information ahead of time, your gut doesn't know what to trust. So it starts trusting words that come out of people's mouth and words are the most dangerous thing to an uneducated mind. It can't process the information fast enough. So you set yourself up. My goal is to eliminate this because we're going to take our time. We're going to go through the data and then we're going to come with the blueprint of how to move forward. And that's what I'm going to show you guys here today, especially when we're talking about government contracting. This is the only thing that allowed me to be free. OK, I tried the other way. When I say the other way, the guessing way, chasing money, you know, uh, I would make a uh, $1,500 check here and I got excited and then, you know, I may make $200 over there and I got excited, but the issue was I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't replicate the steps. I couldn't replicate the steps because I never wrote it down. Okay. So we're going to change that. We're going to make you guys smarter here today. In the meantime, while we get ready to get out here, um, put it in the chat. Where are you guys from? I like to know uh, who we have in the house. Once again, make sure that you guys are hitting that like button, hitting that share button so we can get this out to at least three other entrepreneurs during this Thanksgiving holiday and they can get informed about government contracting. And also, this is your time to network with each other. When you guys go back and watch these videos, uh, you know, you may see somebody put in the comments, um, same place, same area that you're from or something that you do. Uh, network with those individuals. That's, that is the purpose of these platforms right here. I see TTG is in the building. What's going on with you guys? Um, all right. Let me see uh, what else we got here. I'm actually reading um, the Instagram chat as well as looking at all of these other chats that we have here. Um, let me see who we got in the building real quick before I transition into our lesson for today. Uh, we got Brandon from Memphis in the building. What's happening with you, Brandon? I appreciate you showing up and showing out with us today. Uh, do, 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 do. We got your real, your real dad. <laughs> That's a pretty good name. Your real dad, Gavin, Gavin from Denver. What's happening with you, Gavin? Um, Houston TW, what's going on? Hey, I love me some Houston. Y'all know, like, that's my second home out there. You know, I got to get back out there. I haven't been there in a while, though. But shout outs to my people in Houston. Who else we got? We got Zachary coming from Tallahassee. What's happening with you, Zach? Not sure if it's your first time here, but uh, it's the first time that I'm seeing your name. So what's happening? I appreciate you being here. Biggie9087 from Florida. And I got somebody from Facebook, but unfortunately, Facebook don't show me your name, so I can't post it. But what's up with you? Larry, what's going on, my brother? It's always a pleasure to see you up in the house, Larry, out there in Hampton, VA. What's going on with you? Uh, we got a couple of people hanging out with us here on Instagram, TTG from New York. 
And we got Midland, Texas in the building. What's happening with you guys? I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me today. So we're going to dive in here to start looking at the data of government contracting. Um, this is uh, a look inside of the small business money flow tool that I'm advising you guys to go ahead and dive into. Um, once you register, guys, and sign up, you will go through an onboarding process. It's important that you f uh, fill out the information um, as soon as you purchase so you can set up your calls with my team uh, so you can get onboarded and your software can be set up and customized for your business. Our team's going to walk you through that entire process as well as we're going to make sure you're set up to get access to the GovCon marketplace that I'm about to show you guys. So it's important, again, when you go to sbmoneyflow.com, you get signed up for that Elevate plan that you follow the steps and um, get onboarded properly. But anyways, once you get onboarded and set up, you're going to come down here to the bottom and click on the cheat code, okay? I only teach people how to cheat in my programs. I don't know anything else, right? Uh, only school told us that we couldn't cheat. In the real world, in the business world, I've never been in a situation that I can't open a book or phone a friend to solve a problem. Uh, so we're going to learn how to cheat to become business owners out here. And when I say cheat, I don't mean copy and plagiarize or things of that nature. I really mean cheat. Just like if you would have the answers when you was taking your test in school. I want you to think about this. I didn't tell you not to go to the classroom to learn how to do the information. I say when it comes time to take the test, I want you to be able to have the book, the uh, answer sheet if the teacher gave it to you before. Every, every resource possible that you can have in front of you, I want that in front of you so you can quickly go get the answer and um, you know get back to business. And that's exactly what, what I want you guys to get in the habit of doing. Now, for government contracting data, uh, the... One of the most important things is this thing called a NAICS code, N-A-I-C-S code. Uh, I like to compare it to the grocery store. If you was in the grocery store and you looked up in the aisle, you would see aisle numbers like 1 through 24. And it just so happens that the aisles are split to the left and to the right. But you kind of got an idea that aisle three is canned goods, baked goods, and all the other goods, right? So to the right side is the goods, and then to all of the, the left side of aisle three is all the dry pantry stuff. But we know when we walk to the right, these are baked goods. When we look to the left, this is all the dry. That doesn't tell us exactly what's on the shelf, but it gives us an idea of where we need to be. This is what your NAICS code is. Your NAICS code is the sign up in the grocery store that says IO3. So as I look at a NAICS code like 541512, it says Computer Systems Design Services. That's very broad. Okay. A lot of different contracts and opportunities can fall under that broad statement right there. It puts me on the aisle. It doesn't tell me what's on the shelf, though. But I got to get to the aisle first. So we have to know what aisle our business lies on when talking to the customer called the government. Not what you think it should be, not what you believe it should be, but what does the person with our money, what do they say aisle we're supposed to be on? Now, I, I really harp on this because not all government customers consider your product or service to be on the same aisle. Okay. I hope you guys are sticking with me. Put a fire emoji in the chat. If you are understanding what I'm telling you right here, that not all government customers purchase your products or services on the same aisle. All right. Now that we understand the aisles, we have to also understand that our product and services could fall on multiple aisles. So that means that I could have multiple NAICS codes. So these are my NAICS codes right here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six NAICS codes that I'm looking for opportunities. Now these mainly have IT contracts under for what I look for. 
But there's admin service contracts to come out of here. Social media management contracts come under this 541613. I've had a trash contract come under this 541519 contract, which just blew my mind. But hey, it was under there, right? So I'm getting an understanding of all of the opportunities that fall under my next code. And I'm going to make sure I have all of those next codes that I want to be a part of. Okay. So if I'm in the IT field, I want all the IT next codes under my profile on sam.gov. Okay. Now, can I be an IT company and have a trash contract? Can I put that trash NICS code under my IT company's profile? The answer is yes. Nobody can tell your business what it can and can't do but you. Okay. So if I have the NICS code under my profile to say that we do trash, then I do trash. And there ain't nothing that nobody can tell me no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Now, I do want to put a little asterisk there. Okay. If you look like a jack of all trades, you scare me, okay? So if I look at your profile on sam.gov and I see that you have 50 NICS codes on there, you're telling me that your business is capable of providing services on 50 aisles in the grocery store. And the grocery store is huge. And you're telling me that you're capable of performing 50 different areas of expertise. And then I look at your business and you've never, ever won a government contract before in the history of your business, because this is prime. I mean, this is public information. I can go look at it. So now you told me that you do 50 different things. You've never won any government contracting business and you probably really ain't won no real big business. You just scared me because you're all over the place. So we're going to focus in. We're going to stay in our lane until opportunity presents itself. What do I mean by this? If I find an opportunity to do trash and I fly planes and that's what my contract is for, but there's a trash opportunity that's fell in my lap because the customer that I keep approaching for these plane contracts had a very simple trash opportunity right here that, hey, I talked to them. We've built the relationship. They happened to mention this trash opportunity out of the blue and said, Travis, can you do it? And when the government asks me, can I do something? I don't never tell them no. The reason I never tell them no is because, yes, my company can do it. Travis can't do it. But Travis's company that he owns and operates is more than capable of doing that because I'm going to go hire the subject matter expert that knows what the hell to do. And just like that, that means that my comp company is capable of performing that trash contract. Then and only then do I go into sams.gov and change my profile to add that trash next code in because I only need that trash next codes to be under my profile when I submit the proposal. Not a time before. OK, so when I go to submit that proposal, I'm going to make sure that I fill in it. Probably I'll do like 30 days before, maybe 60 or 90 days before, if you can, just to make sure it all registers in. But I'm going to go ahead, put that in there. I'm going to submit the proposal for the trash contract. Since I got the relationship, I should win that trash contract. Now I don't mind having that capabilities number there. I mean that next code there because I have past performance of doing trash, right? Now, again, I want to be mindful. I'm going to give you guys a story really quick. I was uh, working as a consultant with a company. Um, my guy uh, got into government contracting and he was so gung ho. He listened to people on the internet and they told him that, you know, you can get cleaning service contracts in the government and that's the easiest contracts to get, which is, you know, kind of fairly true. But uh, if you're putting together a strategy to build wealth, well, you got to think sometimes it's not always smart to chase money. So he had won over six million dollars doing cleaning contracts. But he went to school uh, for an aerospace engineer. Um, that's what he was. He really wanted to work uh, with NASA and deal with that. But uh, he wanted to start out his own business down that lane. And nobody knew him in NASA. Uh, so he was chasing the money, got all of these cleaning contracts. For years, he had been doing cleaning. But I told you he had this itch 
because he's an aerospace engineer. Well, finally, an opportunity comes out that he really knows to the T. I mean, this is his contract. Uh, and we, you know, we work to get him this opportunity. I got a couple of relationships over at NASA. So, you know, we, we were working towards that. We submitted the bid. I mean, through my relationships and everything that we done, we felt pretty solid that he should win this contract. I mean, really, really solid. Uh, even our relationships on the other side felt solid that he should get it. Come the day of judgment, um, he didn't win the contract. So, you know, probably about four or five months went by and I talked to my um, people over there and I asked them what happened one day, you know, um, and they just informed me. They go, well, Travis, you know, your guy was good. We really liked him. But here's the problem. When we looked at his past performance, and excuse my French, I'll be trying to uh, bleep myself out. He said, hey, Travis, the guy that you sent to us, he's been cleaning up for the last three years. How am I going to trust somebody that's been cleaning up for the last three years to have astronauts' lives in their hands? How am I going to justify that I'm giving this person hundreds of millions of dollars to protect our astronauts in the past performance says that he's a shiner? And I can't argue with that. It's kind of true. So I'll just tell you that to be mindful. If you know that you have an expertise in IT or your expertise as an engineer, cybersecurity and something really, really big and impactful, you bet not just go chase contracts just to chase contracts because that ain't the smart way to go. You could mess yourself up for what you really supposed to be doing, chasing money. I hope you guys understood that story right there. Now let's get back to the data, okay? So your next code, this is the most important thing because this is going to give us direction of where we need to flow. So in our tool right here of small business money flow, you're going to go ahead and put your next code in here. All right, let me hit this reset button. Um, I've got, I got all this stuff programmed in already. My primary next code for my company is 541519. You always want to have at least one primary next code. Uh, and then you could add any of the other ones in. As you can see, guys, you can add whatever next code you want right here. Um, we have them all programmed in. So once you figure out what your next codes are, you go ahead and plug them in here. And this is how we've made it so simple in small business money flow. So for the fiscal year 2024, of course, uh, you know, the full budget isn't out. They haven't spent a lot of the money yet. So a lot of the opportunities ain't showing up. But we can change this to 2023 or 2022 and get an idea of, okay, who spent my money in 2022? And we're going to actually be putting more years on this too as time goes on. Um, you know, we're still programming a lot of stuff out, uh, but we're going to go back more years. Uh, but now I can look and say, okay, in 2022, who spent money using NICS code 541519? Essentially, I'm looking and saying who uh, went on my grocery store aisle and spent some money on my aisle. So that's the first point of data that I'm looking for. Now I want to say, okay, well, who's actually buying it? This is the agency. So I can look right here and say, okay, uh, GSA and DOD are the people who are spending a ton of money with this NAICS code 541-519. I know that GSA is GSA schedule. So the IT70 schedule, the 8A schedule, all of these schedules, that's probably what they're using. So I know in my mind, um, just because I've been do doing government contracting for a while, uh, in order for me to tap into these contracts with the GSA, I'm going to have to learn about schedules. OK, not all contracts require you to learn about schedules. Uh, but if you're working with the GSA, we're going to have to learn this thing called schedules. And FYI, when you guys get involved with small business money flow, I have the training in the back office already that breaks down all of this stuff. So you could go back into your back office and watch the training on GSA schedules. All right, so the GSA is spending $80 billion in 2022 for that one NAICS code, okay? Now, again, if I wanted to uh, up this a little bit more and say, okay, well, what about my other NAICS code? Five, four, one, five, oops, 
five, four, one, five. All right. Um, one, three. I'll put that one in there. Okay. So I see two. We're still in GSA. As you can see, it increased to a hundred and one billion dollars. Okay. Of what was spent just in 2022 guys. So now I can get an idea. Now let me switch to 2023. Okay. I see in 2023, a whole lot more people were spending money utilizing those NAICS codes. Do you see the difference right there? So now I got the GSA, I got the VA, I got Homeland, Department of Defense, I got DOJ, the Interior, HHS. HHS is my largest customer right now, currently till this date. They spent $13 billion in one year. Look at all of these agencies that spent billions of dollars in just one year. GSA, where we showed you that they spent uh, $101 billion in 2022, well, look what they did in 2023. They spent $411 billion. So this is why I encourage you guys to understand who your customer is and keep talking to them because the, they're going to spend more money. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about that. All right. So now that piece of data, I know who got my money. I, it's very important that I know that data so I can put my head down and stay focused and not pay attention to anything else. Okay. Now that I know I, who's spending my money, I want to get a general idea of how much money that they're spending. I have a rule that you should never go more than three agencies deep because as you guys can see, are you telling me that the GSA, let's say this one agency right here, GSA, are you trying to tell me that they don't have enough money? Like if you try to attack all of these agencies, that's just greed right there. Like who do you think you are? You ain't Lockheed Martin. You ain't Boeing. You ain't KPMG. You ain't Amazon. You ain't Microsoft. Why do you think that you can work with all of these companies? Like, who do you think you are? And they not over here asking you for no $200 contracts, no $5,000 contracts. Do you see the size of these things? So you need to stop playing around. The reason why you're not winning is because you're playing. I just told you, how do you think that you're the anomaly that's just getting started and you're going to work with every one of these agencies spending billions of dollars. They don't have time to mess around with you. This is why you ain't working because you're not working. <laughs> so now that I focus and say, okay, well, why don't I just pick the top three agencies and spend the most money? One, two, three. Why do I need to worry about any of the rest of them? Do they got money there? Yeah. But here's the kicker. If I look at just the Library of Congress, they spent $2.5 billion. Or no, they spent, I'm, I keep saying billion. They spent $2.5 million, sorry. All right, so if they spent $2.5 million, the odds of me coming in here and taking people's uh, food off their table that was already eaten here is going to be kind of tight. But if I come up here and I look at $411 million, my bad, I kept saying billion, guys. Didn't read my comments. If I, if I see this agency that spent $411 million, well, here goes the other kicker. 23% of this must go to small businesses. So if I look at the $411 million, I take away 23% of that, I already know at minimum 23% of that belongs to me. So now I'm playing the numbers game. Okay, well, if it's 23% of $411 million, I ain't, I ain't going to win all 23%. But can I win 1%? The ball game starts to change. Because I'm only focused on winning 1% of $411 million. That's quite a bit of money. That's life-changing money right there. But if I stay focused on 1% of $2.5 million, is it some good money? Mm, yeah, to the average person. But again, everybody's probably sitting right here because they're so intimidated of the bigger number. When there's so many opportunities right here for you to partner with big boys, for you to strategically take stuff from big boys, uh, for people not to even be paying attention to stuff right here and it's just you, this opens up opportunity. That lower data number does not. OK, so we got our other data point. Who's spending and how much they've been spending? We got three points. Next code, who's spending it, how much is spending it. Very important before we even get started with anything government contracting. I'm walking you down the correct way to do this. 
research first so we can come up with the hypothesis. And then we can make an educated guess on how we're about to move forward. All right, so let's keep scrolling down. Once again, I'm looking at SB Money Flow. This is our tool that we have built uh, for all small businesses. You can go to sbmoneyflow.com and get involved. Now, here goes the other beauty. When are they buying? Okay, so let me look down here. Let's go back and scroll up 2022. Okay, we're going to go look at 2022, and I'm actually going to remove a next code just so we can see a little bit better here. All right, so if I take a look at when they're buying, I see in uh, 20, 2020 in Q3, okay? So this is going back to 2020 up to 2022. Matter of fact, let's take it to 2024 so we can just look right there, all right? So now we're in 2024, okay? I can take a look, and according to GSA, let me take a look at the previous years. Well, 2022 and Q1, I want everybody to understand what Q1 of 2022 is. Q1... This is standing for Q1 of 2020, 2022's fiscal year for the government. Q1 for the government is October, November, and December. Okay? Remember this. Q1 for the government is October, November, December. Can anybody take a wild guess? Why every time you see Q1, you probably won't see too much spending going on. Can anybody take a guess? Put it in the chat of why you probably don't see too much spending going on in Q1 of every fiscal year. Of course, I'm going to tell you guys. And we got a little delay on the stream. I think it may be like 20 second delay. So by the time you guys hear me uh, put this answer in. You may be thinking about it, but the reason you do not see a lot of spending in Q1 is because the budget didn't get signed. You guys are hearing right now. They're arguing about uh, fighting against a lockdown. They're patching a budget uh, because of all of the spending. Absolutely, Zachary. The budget isn't approved. You hit it on the money, Zach. Um, yes, we have to wait for that budget to get approved by the president and Congress. They don't know where to spend the money at yet. All right. So not to say money doesn't get spent. It's still money being spent. It just ain't as strong. Okay. After Q1, which is January, February, March is Q2. Now money starts rolling because usually they get the budget signed after they get back off vacation. Ain't it crazy? They put the budget around the time that they go on vacation and stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. So now that I understand when my customer is buying, well, look, if I look right here, if I'm really in the GSA, well, look, it says GSA in Q3 and Q4 started spending crazy. Can anybody take a guess of why when we look at Q4 all the time, it's always crazy spending going on in Q4? Go ahead. Tell me in the comments again. Tell me why you think it's always crazy spending going on in Q4. And of course, I'm going to tell you this answer. The reason it's always crazy spending going on in Q4 is because the government is on a use it or lose it method. If they do not spend all that money for the fiscal year's budget, they lose it going into the previous, into the next year's budget. So they're trying to get all the money off their table uh, so they can get more money going into the next fiscal year. All right. So. Now that we understand our customer is buying in Q4, well, we don't wait until Q4 to get in front of them. This is telling me right now, if I wait until Q4 to get in front of them, I'm losing. Instead, if I know that they're spending all the money in Q4, I should start building a relationship right now in Q1. I should be trying to put together all of my teams and everybody that I'm going to need for Q1. And guess what? I already know what type of stuff they're going to be looking to procure in Q4 because I looked and seen what they purchased four years ago. I looked to see what they purchased two years ago. They're going to buy it again. Products and service. So now I got an idea before the contracts even come out of what I should be putting together. 
what teams I should have, what employees I need, what type of money I'm going to need to fund this project. I should have all of this stuff in order. I should know what I'm doing before Q4 hits. This is government contracting. This is real government contracting. We don't wait till the last minute. I wait till the last minute. That's just insanity to me. So now I got an idea of when I should be getting in front of my customer to go after the opportunities. Well, the next thing I want to know, guys, I told you, I got to cheat. Well, who already was successful at doing this stuff? Because if I go ask my cousin, they never did $500,000 in government contracting. If I go ask my aunt, she never did $475,000 with the GSA services. So what answer, like, what are they possibly going to tell me that helps prepare me for a customer that's about to spend $2 million? That, like, nobody around me has the answer. And we often get caught up in this. We're asking fools for information. So if you ask a fool for information, guess what results you get? Foolish results. This is why I got to teach you guys how to cheat better. Because I don't even have to ask anybody in this profession. It's all public information. And again, we got the tool right here with SB Money Flow that we've simplified it so you can just do all of this stuff at a click of a button. I know I'm taking a long time to talk to you guys through the process, but the more and more you go through this, you'll see how fast you can go through a click of a button. So now I'm going to come right here and I'm going to say, well, let me take a look at Spark LLC. Well, I know Spark LLC is located in Maryland. I know they're in Lanham. Well, that gets me excited because I'm located in Maryland. I'm in Largo. They're right down the street from me. Not only does this prove to me that this is a person that knows how to get the attention of my customer, but it's a person in my own backyard. That lets me know that the customer likes doing business with the same people in my backyard. Well, hell, it's in my backyard. So guess what I'm about to go do? I'm now about to take this information and I'm going to go Spark LLC, okay? Then I'm going to come right on back up here. I'm going to go and search Spark LLC. I know they're located in Atlanta, Maryland already because my software told me that's where they're located at. Oh, well, what do you know? I believe this is Spark LLC. Okay, so now I can take a look. Well, Spark got green grass in the back of their profile. Guess what? My website should have some grass. <laughs> Spark got about blog, client services, articles, speaking, and white papers. Guess what I should have? About blog, client services, articles, and white papers. Spark got their stuff in white up here. Guess what I should have? My stuff in white up here. Spark got three blog posts right here with a read more button. Guess what? I should have three blog posts right there with a read more button. Guess what else I noticed about Spark? Their Ooh. website is very, very basic. Ain't, it, it ain't fancy. It doesn't look like they paid people thousands of dollars to build this website. Matter of fact, it looks like they just dragged and dropped a lot of stuff. I can see the three different sections. This is one section. This is two section. This is three sections. Oh, well, we can build this inside of SB Money Flow. What do you know? Our one tool that looks up government contracts, it can help you build websites too, very quickly, just like this. So now I can see the flow, but I'm not done right there because Travis said the ultimate cheater never cheats off one person. Instead, we're going to take our time and do our due diligence. We're going to come back here and we're going to look at the rest of the companies and we're going to keep compiling people that got our money. And then eventually what's going to happen is you're going to realize they all been cheating off each other too. <laughs> Everybody been cheating off each other. The only person who ain't been cheating off each other is you. <laughs> so now again, I'm getting an idea and I can say like, okay, well, you know, I like the way that company operates. I'm going to build my stuff to look like their stuff. And just that simple, you now got a direction and a flow of like what your website should look like. And again, if you come across a very complicated website, just remember, 
Okay, like this one is a little more complicated. You can still build this inside of SB Money Flow. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. Okay, now remember this. What did I just look up? VTEX or something? They did $475,000. I looked up Spark. They did $600,000 and their website was basic. VTEC had a more complicated tech website. Sparks was just a consulting company with a very basic website. Sparks did more money than VTEC. I'm telling you that because your website don't make you no money, just FYI. Look, websites is cute for the social media world, you know what I'm saying? It's real cute for everybody who over there that's talking about content and all that stuff. That's what it's cute for. But in the government contracting space, don't nobody care. Your website don't make you the money. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say, does it flow? Does it check out right? Keep it basic is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? But again, we know who to cheat off of. The other thing that I'm paying attention when I cheat off of these companies is I'm looking for their capability statement. <laughs> they got things called white papers right here that I could look off of, right? I can go click on their white papers. Didn't the other company have something called white papers, right? These white papers, they're just writing to the government on their website saying, hey, I seen that you had a problem. I'm writing a white paper towards uh, how to solve that problem. They're hoping that the government comes here, reads it, and then calls them and say, hey, you know that white paper that you wrote about solving my problem? Well, we want to we want to give you the contract to go ahead and solve it. We read your white paper. Things like that can happen. OK, but for the most part. All I'm really looking for is to see, like, can I find a capability statement of the company? The other reason why I'm looking for a capability statement is because this is probably a big boy, too. I mean, they got a lot of stuff here that they do or they could. <laughs> they they could be the fool that just got a bunch of stuff on their um, websites, but I don't think they are. Um, they got a lot of partners. Look like they've been doing a lot of business. They located in Washington, D.C., so they paying pretty nice chunk for office space. Um, of course, I could go and look their company up and see exactly how much prime work that they've been doing. But this looks like a uh, either a large, small business or they're a mid-sized company, right? But this would be a great company to partner with. That's the other kicker of why I'm looking at all these companies. I'm not just using them to cheat off of. I'm about to go sit down with them too. I want to sit down with them because, again... Why do I want to talk to my uncle about doing government contracting business and they never did it before? Instead, I want to work with VTech. VTech got all of the relationships that I don't. They partner with Microsoft, AWS, Dell, Cisco. Look at all of their partners. They have access to stuff that I don't have access to. But one thing that I know about them I don't care how big or how small they are, they still want more business. So all I'm doing is seeing what it is that they do because I'm about to bring them contracts in a space that they aren't at. How do I know? Because I'm going to go back to my small business money flow and I'm going to look for more opportunities. And I mean, if I don't see them right here, <laughs> that means that they're not with this customer, but I've already proven that they know how to do the work. So now I can partner with a company that doesn't have the capacity to do business development with this other customer over here, but they got the resources. So I'm going to introduce them to the new customer that I'm going to do all the due diligence. I'm going to do the work to make sure that I can present them as me. Or maybe we have a relationship like that's where, you know, in business, we can work partnerships up to make it make sense. We'll figure out who needs to take the lead dog or the role, but I'm essentially going to become a consultant to them. I'm a business development consultant. I'm going to help them get the work and I'm going to get rewarded for it. Okay. But I'm going to do a whole lot of work though. <laughs> and you may be asking yourself, why would you work for a company without getting paid yet? Well, one, you ain't got no money. You ain't got no past performance. Don't nobody know who you are. So you're going to be working so you can let these companies that do got money uh, know who you are. And now all of a sudden, when they win that $600,000 contract, you could potentially put $60,000 in your pocket. This is money that you never had before. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you moving and shaking. 
The other beauty about this too, which is the approach that I took, instead of taking the $60,000 directly as cash payment, I said, hey, can I get two butts in a seat? So when we won the contract, I essentially became their subcontractor. They rewarded me with two positions on that contract. I wanted the two positions on that contract so I could get past performance. I could say my company actually did the work. That's more valuable to me than $60,000. I still got paid money because uh, I make profit off every time somebody goes to work, right? This is what businesses do. We make money off of our workers every hour that they sit down. They may make uh, $32 an hour, but we're billing like $50 an hour and we're making the difference. Okay. So I, I was able to put those two butts in the seat and now my company has passed performance based off the two employees that work under our company. And just like that, I can now go after more contracts and instead of needing a partner, I have the past performance to prove that I did the work. So now I can become the prime. This is just a strategy, okay? So again, you're gonna come in here, those are gonna be your main data points to cheat. You don't need no more data points after that. This will put you in the right path on how to move forward. Once you can understand that, well now we're gonna come back over here to SB Money Flow and we're gonna come click up here on opportunities, okay? And now we can actually go, you know, work with the money. So, you know, Always tell people when getting started, don't be intimidated, like go after opportunities, even the ones that I'm telling you, you know, don't fall under your profile currently at this moment. But the whole goal is to build strategy. So we do want to build opportunities for what we know how to do, because, again, if you need to make 30 million dollars to become free. Well, you need to have $300 million worth of opportunities put on your what we call pipeline because you can win 10% of that. And 10% of your $300 million is your $30 million, and now you're free. And I just showed you a customer that has over $7 trillion that they spend every year. Trust me, they got $300 million sitting right there for you. So we're going to come here to opportunities. And again, you can just look at any opportunities that you want, okay? But of course... Since you now have all of your data, you can search by your NAICS codes. You can search by your set of sides. It's just a click of a button. And now that you have it all right here, you can add it, okay? So if I come here, this is gonna take me to sam.gov and I can see the actual opportunity live on sam.gov. I can get all of the information that I possibly need and double check all right there. That is the beauty. It's just a click of a button. You can make these things happen. The other thing that you guys can do, and we're actually going to be working on this, that again, you'll be able to just click a button right here. Um, but inside of our small business money flow, we have these sites built for you. So what'll happen is whether you're in the streets or you're looking on your small business money flow government marketplace, uh, you'll pull up this website. So I know mine, um, uh, we already got it, sbgovcon forward slash new money, right? So I will pull up this website right here and what ends up happening is it is a site just for you to fill out information. Let me pull this up. Do, 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 place and go. It always mess up on my demo account, my bad. Every time I want to do demo things, I always get messed up. All right, but anyways, so what's going to happen is you're going to end up coming here to your site that we already have pre-built out for you. Let's see if I can hit it right here inside of here. And you would take this information. Now, I would, you know, as you get better and better, you can have a VA do this for you, right? Because uh, I don't believe in doing things that don't make money when you're a visionary of a business. Uh, but getting started out, you're the everything of your business. So. Anyways, as you look at those contract opportunities, you're gonna pull up this website here and all you're gonna do is start filling in the information. So essentially you would just take this, uh, you know, and again, all of the information is here. You can look at the solicitation numbers. We already got all the codes. So you would just take all of this information over, bring it here to the site that we have created, 
put it there, blah, blah, blah. We're going to just fill stuff in, hustle the net. Uh, we're going to say the date posted was November 1st. The response due date is going to be uh, December. The agency, we're going to say CMS. We're going to say it's a $532,000 opportunity. We're going to say this is a test title. All right, we're going to put the link to sam.gov where the opportunity is. We're going to put a little description of what it is. Uh, if it was an RFI, RFP, RFQ, you're going to go ahead and check it. You could dump all the attachments right there. You could put a note in here like uh, find a subcontractor by Thursday, right? So now I got a note that I got to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that submit button. And I could click right here and then go back and, you know, do it all over again for the next opportunity. But what ends up happening is I actually just got an alert right here on my phone. Okay, well, you guys can't see it. I got an alert on my phone to let me know that a new opportunity was put on my pipeline. All right. Um, and then. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I could come look at my pipeline. And as you guys can see right now, so this was the opportunity that we just put in here. There's a solicitation number, the dollar amount, blah, blah, blah. Now I can stay up to date with it very quickly inside of my small business money flow. So I would come over here. I would have my calendar programmed in. I could create appointments for subcontractors, team meetings or whatnot. If I got task right here, okay? So what did I do? A task, subcontractor needed. So we already got that task in there, but maybe I need to follow up with the subcontractor. I would go ahead and put that information right here, schedule it. And now I have tasks assigned. If I had a team, I could assign this to people on my team. All right. But the other beauty, let's say I need to talk to the contract officer or maybe this was just a subcontractor. I can now just click on a name right here. And what will end up happening is going to put me in this conversation thread. So anytime I talk right here to the individual uh, I can stay updated to the last thing that we talked about. So I can send the email out right here and it will all stay here. And now I can look and say, OK, well, let me see. This is the last time that I talked to him. This is what we talked about. Um, I'm going to follow up from right here at this point. You guys have been struggling because you guys suck at following up. But we've created the system and tool that this keeps track of everything for you. So you don't lose the follow up anymore. OK. So that's how you're going to go uh, stay ahead of all of your contract opportunities. And now you can move this and say, OK, this is a new opportunity. It's in review. We decided like we want to move forward. So now it's in progress. Maybe you say, hey, I don't want to go after this at all. Well, this is still data for our hypothesis. So we need to move this to won't respond. Instagram, um, the account is about to close and turn off. Uh, I'll turn you guys back on, okay? Or you can come to YouTube and watch the live. Uh, but now you guys can see right there that, um, sorry. Now you guys can see right there that you're able to track these opportunities. Now, the reason why I tell you guys about that data right there of even if we're not responding, we're going to keep it because you'll see a pattern of why you don't respond to opportunities. And we want to keep that information. And then you're going to see things that you won and things that you lost. And again, this is all going to be data for how to move forward, how you like moving forward to win. So all of this stuff gets tracked right here inside of the small business money flow. OK, so you can stay up to date. The other feature that we put in here for you guys, because I told you guys you, you suck with your follow up game and I'm not scared to admit it. You guys got to just be truthful with yourself, too. That I'm not good at following up. So the other thing that we built right here, I tell people to F you daily. So we built the F you intake form. Same thing. While you out in the streets and you shaking hands and kissing babies. OK, all you're going to do is remember to pull up the site F you. And we're going to do the same thing. You're going to put the people's name in, their email, their phone number, the industry is, the date that you contacted them. What date do you need to F you? You got to remember F you. How many times do you say F you a day? And I'm talking about your follow up. You should be following up with somebody every day. So if I met them today, at minimum, I need to follow up with them in two days, right? It really should be within 24 hours, but I need to put an alert. I contacted him on that date, but I need to follow up with him on that date. 
And I need my system to remind me because we put too many tasks on the brain and expect the brain to remember to follow up with somebody, drive you home, cook dinner, remember what to do with your kids and all of this stuff. Like you torture your brain. So SB Money Flow is to stop torturing yourself. And instead, we're going to use technology to assist us in this process and it's going to make us better. Now we're going to have what millionaires do. Millionaires don't try to put everything on their brains. We use systems, processes, and procedures that can be duplicated even when we're not there. This is why I want you guys to get into the system side. You have to have something that can be duplicated in case you get hit by a truck tomorrow. It's all possible. Don't you tell me that you can't tap out tomorrow. I can tap out tomorrow and so can you. But while you're sitting there recovering, we still need the operations to operate. This is where systems come into play. Okay. So now you put all of this stuff right here in the same way that we're going to follow up with those contracts. You're going to be following up with your people. Okay. So boom. We also got the AI cheat code that we put right up here that you can find your money. Okay. But we already got the other side. You can do that too. But anyways, that is the systems that we've built right there. So you could quickly put those contracts onto your stuff as well as you could put new leads when you're out there networking onto your stuff. Very vital to you guys growing. Those are the important pieces of the data that I wanted to share with you guys today. If you guys picked up valuable information out of that, drop a fire emoji down there in the chat, no matter where you are watching from. Don't forget, if you really truly enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that share button. Share this out with three other entrepreneurs. Share it to your Instagram. Go ahead, take a picture. Share that out to your Instagram. Let the people know you don't want to miss the next live, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time zone so we all can start getting caught up with this. And by the way, I got to give you guys a shout out, man. I have to give you guys a shout out because we're almost at 15,000 subscribers. We may be at 15,000 subscribers by the time I get off of this. I don't take any of this stuff lightly. Um, we are almost at over 600 million views. So shout outs to you guys. I can't do any of this without each and every one of you all. I appreciate it. We also, I looked at the stats the other day. Uh, you guys have purchased over $7,000 of them badges or YouTube create, whatever they call it. So I appreciate that as well. Every single penny, that is a dollar penny, whatever you guys uh, donate to me, I, I'm very appreciative of that. So once again, I thank you guys. Y'all are the best at what you guys do. So keep on sharing that. I appreciate the fire emojis as well. I do want to open it up for questions. As I said, I'll try to get you guys out of here in an hour. So I am done teaching. We're technically done in that hour. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put your questions in the comments now. Um, I am going to be looking that up. In the meantime, while we wait to see if any of those questions come in, let me get back here. Just um, I want to make sure I remind you guys that you guys can get access to SB Money Flow today. Okay, the Black Friday special will go out at the end of November. The price of SB Money Flow will also go up at the end of November, FYI. Uh, but you're going to get access to my government contracting training. So if you don't know anything about government contracting at all, don't worry about it. We're going to have the full training in the back office when you get SB Money Flow completely for free. It's going to be included. Uh, you're going to get access to my AI tool for our government contracting. You're going to get access to my 30 day challenge that I will have kick off January 2nd. You still need to stay active now. Uh, but on January 2nd, I'm going to teach you guys in 30 days how to build a full, complete business, both online, offline and government contracting for 30 days. So you're going to get access to that as well. The other thing that you're going to get access to because I want you guys to make money and build business is I'm no longer selling my government contract and education. I'm completely done selling it. 
the education costs nineteen hundred well two thousand dollars. That's how much the standalone education portion costs. When you guys join SB Money Flow, you're going to get a code to resell my education. You're going to have a code that you get to resell my $2,000 education for 80% off. When you resell my education for 80% off, I'm going to give you 75% of the commission because I want you guys to learn how to make money faster. And you're going to utilize my tools, okay? I got the sales. I got the systems already in place. I'm going to give you guys the money to learn how to become salespeople because salespeople are the most important part of entrepreneurship. You can make the best system in the world. Like I got, I got the best system with SB money flow in the world. If I don't know how to sell it to anybody, then it's just a good system that's sitting right there collecting dust. I have to teach you guys how to sell faster. So you guys are going to have an opportunity to get in there and resell all of my stuff for the government contracted education portion and get 75% of those sales. So you guys can go ahead, scan that QR code, take advantage of that today. Um, don't forget, we will be here. Let me see where we are at. We will be here on Tuesdays. Oops, sorry. I gotta erase that. Uh, on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time zone, um, we are doing our dollars to cents podcast. Guys, you guys have been getting scammed. I got scammed over a quarter of a million dollars. I don't want this type of stuff to happen to any of us anymore. So we're going to start making dollars to cents so you can learn how to look at things with logic and not emotion. So remember, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be here. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be right back here talking about government contracting like we are today. And every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll be talking about business, how to use utilize this tool, small business money flow and build your business. Uh, remember, tomorrow, I'm not sure if I'll be live or not talking about how to generate leads uh, because of Thanksgiving. But make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll be updated for sure. And I'll let you know exactly if we are going to uh, go into that. Don't forget, you can scan this QR code right here, right now, to make sure you follow me over on YouTube. And last but not least, if you want to stay up to date with all my craziness and everything that I do, follow me over on Instagram. Majority of the time, I'm keeping you guys updated in my story about my thoughts, ideas, and everything that I'm coming up with to move forward. So I do want to open this up for the questions that uh, have come in here. Don't forget, uh, if you want, put the Q followed by the uh, question in the box, and that'll ensure that I don't miss it. All right. How did you develop this? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, some of it was partnerships and collaboration. So if you actually go to uh, some of my previous videos, uh, you'll see the company that we partner with, Core Solution Groups, to help us come up and create this, uh, as well as I'm a computer engineer. Um, I'm a tech guy. I just love building and coding. So hopefully that answered the question. Uh, can uh, us more... Can us more about the cannabis contracts? Um, they're there. I'm not really going to go into it today, but uh, yeah, there's cannabis contracts. It won't be on the federal side. Uh, cannabis contracts are state contracts. It's not federal contracts. They're still illegal federally, but your state probably has it legalized. So you need to look at your state contracts. That's the real reason I'm not going to talk about it is because I don't feel like looking up every state at this moment. People pay me a lot of money to do that, all right? Um, is Small Business Money Flow on an app? Uh, it's not technically on an app, but once you get the tool, uh, you'll have an app capability to control um, your business uh, from the app. So, you know, when people are sending you messages uh, or DMing you on your social channels, which I didn't get into because we were just talking about government contracting today, but when people message you, everything is going to come to one central hub. So you can respond to them in the app that's connected to your to your system 
Uh, and that will be connected to your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, all of that. So when people DM you, you'll get the messages and you can respond right there all inside of one app as well as send emails, contact. You can control your your business inside of the app that's provided. Um, I don't understand. Can I be the middle woman? A company's making over. I don't understand. Hold on. It's missed a lot of information on here. Let's see again. All right. I don't understand. Can I be the middle woman of contract? I got to spread it out so you guys can see it. All right. I don't understand. Can I be the middle woman of subcontracts? Companies making over $25 million. Um, What I would tell you is that you're confusing yourself more with all of these numbers and all of that stuff. You've probably heard too many people talk about government contracting. Um, and it's sending you down a whirlwind of unnecessary information. Um, and I say that because you're talking to me about over 25 million under, like none of that matters. So I don't even want to confuse you more. I don't really know why you put the dollar amounts there. Uh, anybody could be a quote unquote middle person. Um, and I just told you guys how to be a middle person just a minute ago. Uh, I really hate using the word as well because you got all these people on the internet, again, confusing you with this language. And at the end of the day, to me, it's just business. Like you got a buyer, you got a seller, right? Who's the buyer? The buyer is the government. They're, they're acquiring products or services. They're out there seeking to get products and services for problems that they have. Who's the seller? The person doing the work. All right. They're actively looking for people who are trying to buy their products or services. You stand in the middle of it. I don't, I don't need to worry about any of the other jargon and language. I'm finding a buyer and I'm finding a seller and I'm going to put the deal together. However, I need to put it together to make it legal and to make it make sense. All of this other jargon, you got to stop listening to people on the internet. Right? <laughs> Does small business money flow find solicitations federal and state? Just federal, not state. Um, if we sub to small business money, if we sub to small business money today, we need to purchase the course separately. No, if you purchase the small business money flow today, everything's included. I'm giving you guys everything. There's nothing else that you need to purchase from me. Every single thing that I got, I'm giving it to you with the purchase of small business money flow for the month of November. After November, then yes, everything will be split and it won't be included. There is no proper word or title. I just told you, stop looking for a proper word or title. It's business. That's the proper word or title. It's just business. You don't need to put all the extra language to it. That's how you're, again, confusing yourself. And I'm pretty sure you're going to go ask somebody else about what I said. You'll probably go to a PTAC person or something, and they're going to tell you something completely different. The more people you keep asking about stuff, the more you're going to get confused because there's so many different answers to it. It depends on how people see things. I just told you the most simplest answer, but that is too simple, and you're trying to put extra words on it to make it make sense to feel more comfortable about what I'm telling you. I just told you how simple this was. You put more words to it, you're just going to keep wrecking your mind. And that part, I cannot defeat. You know, keep listening to my channel more is what I would highly advise you to do so you can get educated on the way that I operate. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, if you try to listen to the way I operate and then you go listen to the four other contract people on YouTube to talk about government contracting, and they don't do government contracting at the level that I do it at. Their mental capacity don't even operate the way that they can't even think about the shit that I'm saying. So, like, I can't compete with ignorance, you know? The way that they think, I used to think like that when I was doing $200,000 contracts. So I, I, I know what you're saying. I know where you're at. I just personally don't have the time to keep fighting and try to mess with the mind with people. I'm telling you guys, this is the most simplest way to move forward. If you don't act on this information, then you're just wasting time. It's not serious. That's it. I'm telling you, man, it's really not serious, man. Uh, you can't lose something that you don't have. You don't have a government contract. Like, 
here's the kicker. If you guys submit towards an opportunity and you submit wrong, guess what Guess what happens? Absolutely nothing. You don't win a contract. The government don't care about you. Like, you're not alerted on no radar because you lost and that nobody knows who you are. Congratulations. Guess what? You get to do it again. You learn what you did wrong so you don't do it no more moving forward. But if you keep sitting on the sideline because you're so scared of words because of everything that people are saying to you out there like, oh, my God, I don't know if I should hit the submit button or not. Well, you just defeated yourself because you keep listening to ignorance. I keep trying to tell y'all. The only thing you need to worry about is reading the contract. That's number one. That's the number one thing that people don't want to do. Read the contract and the contract will always, always tell you what to do. I've never, ever, ever in the history of my life come across a contract and government contract that does not tell me to the T of what to do. I can't even tell you what to do right now because I don't know what contract you're looking at. People ask me all the time, what do I need to do to win a government contract? Well, hell, I don't know. Because I don't know what contract it is that you are looking at. I could tell you what I had to do for this one contract. And then I could tell you what I had to do for that other contract. And then I could tell you what I had to do for that other contract. But all three of them, they weren't the same. I have to be willing to read to understand what I need to do to move forward. It's that simple. If I try to skip that step, then I almost can guarantee that I lost the opportunity. Because I didn't read it, how to respond to it. It will tell you the font size that you need to respond. It will tell you how many pages you need to respond. It will tell you how many subject matter experts that they're expecting. It will tell you the exact product to the T. Every speck of the product, it will tell you every single thing that you need to know to submit towards it right in the RFP. If you do not read that RFP, then you're telling me right now you don't want to do government contracting. If you ask me a basic question about government contracting, Travis, how do I win a contract? Well, did you read a contract? Because that's what I'm always going to go back to. Did you read the contract? Because Travis don't know how to tell you how to win no damn contract. I didn't make the contract. I didn't write the contract up. I'm not giving you no money on the contract. I have absolutely nothing to do with a contract. So I, Travis, cannot get you a contract, nor can anybody else on the internet. Contrary to what they be saying, can't nobody get you a contract. You have to go get your own contract. And I do not, I'm going to make this reference too, because I've seen this. You guys, I don't want your money post-award contract, guys. I am a multimillionaire already. This is number one. Why do you think that I want to work for you for free, and then you're going to pay me after you get awarded. When I just told you ain't no contracts guaranteed, number one. I can't guarantee a contract even if I work on it. So you think I'm about to work for you for free and then in hopes that you give me some of the profit on the back end. That is never going to happen in the day of my life ever in the day. Ain't no way that I'm ever going to do that. When you have two eyeballs and two hands that can do this on your own, just like I did. <laughs> now, once you start winning money and you like, I want to go after $10 million, $20 million, $5 million, well, you're going to need a little bit more resources and you're going to have the finances to pay me to bring my team and to help you out with that. But getting started, guys, don't you pay nobody all this damn money when you don't even know what you're doing yet? I just showed you, pay, use the tool, what is it, $350 a month. Keep trying. And then eventually you're going to get it. And then once you have this dough in your pocket and you're starting to understand the game of government contracting a whole lot better than where you first started out at, then and only then should you start spending money in business development people. If not, you're going to go broke trying to chase money. And I, I, I keep stressing to you guys, this ain't the place to chase money. <laughs> this is a place to build wealth. Anybody to tell you can win a contract overnight? Well, they just took your money overnight. That's what they just did. Anybody charging you $15,000 talking about we can go through government contracting? You should have saved your $15,000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just kept trying. And you could have got SB money flow for $350 a month. And you could have learned how to build websites to hopefully generate money from B2C. 
You could have learned how to do proposals and invoices so you could generate money from B2B. And you would have been able to get your government contract pipeline in order so you can learn how to generate money from B2G. That's what we're doing with the small business money flow. All right. So um, let me see. Does your course teach bidding on dibs? I believe that we have a training in the back office for dibs. Uh, but, you know, guys, again, it's all really it's all really the same thing, guys. It's just different platforms. You just need to read the contracts and even the dibs stuff. It will tell you exactly what to do. That's it. The better you can guys can learn how to read and break stuff apart. So again, we have trainings in our back office to teach you how to read correctly and pull things out so you can sit it to the side. And now before you even write the proposal, you should know if you have a strong chance of winning or not before you even commit yourself to writing, right? This is why we need to know when is the customer going to acquire our products or service? If it's Q4, that gives me three months to put together everything I need from potential partners to potential employees to the financing to making sure I know how to operate payroll to make sure I know how to onboard new uh, employees from HR aspect to make sure I got my lawyers and contracts tight. This gives me the window to get all this shit together. It's when you chase money, this stuff don't make sense. And it's because you're not building a business. Your emotions is chasing this thing called money. When money is of abundance, it ain't going nowhere. Instead, we need to learn how to do things the right way. Because we ain't playing around with no $5,000. This ain't no ebook that I'm talking about right here, guys. This ain't no, okay, well, uh, can we do $2,500? Like, do you guys have a problem paying us? No. This customer is about to cut you a check for $2.5 million. Ain't nobody sitting here trying to play around. The government don't want to play around. I don't want to play around. Don't none of your potential partners have time to play around. All we want to do is get the business done. All right? Keep the mindset of wealth, and this won't frustrate you. I promise you guys. But it ain't going to be easy. Okay? It will not be easy. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right. I think I have answered every question that I see. Sorry I'm late to this. Your website you was talking about on Trucking Guru Live yesterday. Uh, yeah, that's what we went over today. How to find the data utilizing the small business money flow. Um, all right, cool. I think I've answered every question. I'm scrolling on Instagram to make sure I ain't got no more. I don't see when starting out. Do you think Unison is a good place to start? Uh, Unison is a, um, just another bidding site. Um, again, I don't think it's like saying Unison is a perfect place to start. It's just, you know, it's opportunity guys. You, you should, you should have a little bit of all of that, right? So remember, the perfect place to start is the research. And the other perfect place to start is knowing what you need, right? So I call it your freedom number. What is your freedom number? If you know your freedom number, it's going to make all this make sense. But if you don't know what your freedom number is, then I understand why you are struggling. And when I say your freedom number, I'm saying, how much do you need to get to whatever that retirement age is that 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 financial freedom like what what amount of money do you need to make that you could breathe comfortably like that you could just enjoy yourself like those vision board parties the reason why i hate vision board parties is cuz nobody ever puts the price to the house the boat the dog they never put any of the dollar amounts there the faster we can find out how much that life costs the faster we can know how to move forward so let's say i calculate it in order for me to get the boat, the plane, the house, and everything that I want, it's going to cost me $50 million. Okay, well, now I need to start there. I need to say, okay, Travis, your goal in life is to make $50 million, and we ain't going to wait till we get to 65 to make $50 million. I'm going to write this down, and I want $50 million in the next five years. That means that I need to do $5 million, or no, I say $50 million in the next five years. I need to do $10 million every year for the next five years, okay? 
So now I'm going to write this down since I need to do $10 million every year. I need to come up with a pipeline of opportunity for 2024 worth a hundred million dollars in this pipeline of opportunity worth a hundred million dollars. I'm going to have some opportunities that's in there from unison. I'm going to have some opportunities in there from Sam.gov. I'm going to have some women owned opportunities in there. I'm going to have some 8A opportunities in there. I'm going to have some veteran owned opportunities in there. I'm going to have some state government contract opportunities in there. I'm going to have some local government contracts opportunities in there. I'm going to have some business to consumer opportunities with that damn ebook and them courses. I'm going to have some business to business opportunities in there. And when I combine them all together, it equals a hundred million dollars. It also, when I combine them all together, I didn't change the lane of what it is that I'm trying to do. If I'm cybersecurity at all three levels, all I talked about was cybersecurity. I created a course to teach the consumers about cybersecurity. I created a 30 day challenge to educate consumers on cybersecurity. I created a license to sell cybersecurity courses to businesses that want to get all of their employees trained in cybersecurity. I got a license agreement. You need 35 seats to my cybersecurity course for your business. I'm going to sell it all to you. You need my business to come in as a a cybersecurity consultant to look at your infrastructure, I have that package for you. Then I'm going over to the government side. They're not asking me about my stuff. I'm going to go find the government's problems catered to cybersecurity, and I'm going to start submitting that I know how to do that. Altogether, I stayed in my craft of cybersecurity, and I provided the cart for everybody to check out it. This is where small business money flow comes into play. We're going to have the cart for the business to check out. We're going to have the cart for the consumer to check out. We're going to have the cart for us to submit the proposals for the government to check out. And now you'll see how your freedom number is obtained very quickly because we put our head down and we focus and we no longer pay attention to our cousins that are next to us and ain't never did $5 million in before a day in their life. The most they did was like these $5,000 project and they got you chasing money trying to get $5,000 from all these broke people that ain't never going to give you your freedom number. They don't have $30 million to set you free. I hope I just explained that to you guys. I may have hurt some feelings right there, too. And that's OK, too. I'm not for everybody. <laughs> I actually like hurting feelings so you could get up off my channel because I ain't got no time for soft people. Business ain't soft. If you don't believe me that business ain't soft, y'all just seen my man Sam from Open AI. They did that boy dirty. But what did he do? They fought back because business is dirty. It's all about strategy. What did he do? He called up the employees and said, hey, are y'all going to ride with me? You know what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden we can play the dirty game of business. But business ain't for soft people. So I can't be soft with you. Because then I enable you to start crying and coming up with excuses of why you not trying to pump forward. I know it's racism out here. I know the black man struggles. I know the black woman be struggling. I know we the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to making money. I know doors don't get open for us all the time, but damn it, all we need is one door open. All we need is one Caucasian person to help us. All we need is one person to finance a project. I don't need the whole damn world to, to like me. I don't need the whole world to understand how I'm about to operate. I just need one. And if I keep talking, the one person will arise because the man upstairs ain't never left a brother hanging. Ever. He may make you struggle, but he won't leave you hanging. You have to be willing to wake up every single day on a mission to obtain your freedom number. And everything else will get easier. But if you skip that part, you're going to break. You're going to crumble. Guaranteed fat. Oh, I see my man Coach Austin is in the building, man. Make sure you guys holler at my guy, Coach Austin. What's happening with you, man? It's one of my brothers right there, man. Great guy, great guy in business out in Houston, Texas. Make sure y'all tap in with him. We got a video on uh, YouTube as well talking about you know buying businesses. That's always a great way to go. Uh, but outside of that, guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed this live. Got out hour and 30 minutes. 
Uh, if you want to, if you're listening now, you can actually go back and watch it. I did get finished with the training in one hour. Uh, I've just been answering questions and um, going on my rants here for the last 30 minutes. Don't forget, make sure that you are liking, subscribing to the channel, hitting that share button uh, so you can stay updated about what's going on. Um, again, we do appreciate you guys. Shout outs to my, my homie Nike. Nike, you want to say what's up? Say what's up to the people. I mean, but outside of that, guys, again, I love you all. I appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Keep making sure that you guys are liking and sharing out this information so other minority business owners can find out what we got going on over here. That's all that I got for you guys. I love you all. Make sure you enjoy your holiday weekend. Stay blessed out there. Don't eat up too much food. Break bread with your family. Have some tough conversations with your family uh, over this Thanksgiving, man. But at the end of the day, it's all about support, love, and a network. So make sure y'all keep talking. Make sure y'all keep networking. Remember, money don't stop just because the holiday is here. So get out there and make that money. I love you all. I'll talk with you later.